episode 25 of the kickback first time well we did a test run a couple weeks ago during it live but this is the first time that we are coming to you live on hang time as well as facebook live so if you are tuned in we appreciate you joining us mm -hmm. uh, as usual i go by the name of Caesar. i am your host slash moderator to my right dan o'holcomb editor extraordinaire here at sneaker inc on the far left, we've got John Colombo, music video director, and his sunglasses are a bit darker than usual tonight. So if, They're you're, coming off. if you're watching live, he's normally not this fly. I mean, he's fly. I yeah. Actually, yeah. I'm going to save but, everybody. I'm going to take him down a notch. There you go, guys. OK, look at that. You know, I appreciate you joining us now. We can actually have like a, like a yeah. much nicer now. Yeah, right? You don't look much, like a mobster. Am I more approachable now? <laughs> you, you, you was like, you know, the gold chains, the leg up, the dark shades. I don't know if you was about to like hit a lick or something. Like, yeah, I'm just see the situation, you know. Man, yeah. Right? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and that fourth voice that you hear is a, a near uh, dear friend to Sneaker Inc. He is also a returning guest. He goes by the name of Nelson Diaz. Yeah. What up, what up, what up. Thank and you. And you guys may not know, but Nelson is very, very opinionated. So I am excited to hear the things <laughs> that he has to speak on tonight. Uh, some might even say you're a bit bitter when it comes to certain things. <laughs> bitter? I mean, we're going to kick it off. We're going to kick it off right. I just want to, you know, I want to hear your the man has feelings. Uh, rebuttal. Yeah, yeah well, you, you know, got feelings. We're all passionate. You know what I mean? It's bitter's a, bitter's a very strong word. Okay. Uh, I'd say brutally honest. Okay. And I'd say, uh, you know, opinions based upon history. Absolutely. And then based upon the lack thereof of the knowledge of history for people. So for it's sure. like uh, sniffing the bull, you know, whatever. You can, but yeah, I'm, you can speak. Oh, I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I, yeah. The bullshit, you know. But uh, uh, if people think I'm bitter, that's their issue, not mine. <laughs> you know, Facts. that's the, that's the, you know, if it's not paying my bills, their opinions hey, don't pay my bills, then I'm good. Respect, most definitely. You know, so what is this, what are some of the things that you feel um, lack legitimacy when it comes to the sneaker game now because there are a lot of youngsters that are in the game and and people that are not necessarily as educated and may want to be educated but i feel like sometimes they get lost in the shuffle of not right. getting the the proper education yeah i i think it is you know how when they say generations have missed teaching the youth something that they need to carry on in life mm -hmm. the sneaker culture missed that with this last generation. Yeah. Uh, the resale market hit so fast. The, uh, the resale market to me is the equivalent of Bitcoin. Mm. People don't research Continue. Bitcoin. They just want to toss wanna, money in yeah. because they think they can make money. Yeah. They don't understand cryptocurrency. They don't understand that the people that trade Bitcoin, they're not trading Bitcoin. They're trading 15 other cryptocurrencies because of the trend of Bitcoin. Mm. So for me, it's seeing the youth just worried about picking up a pair of Yeezys to resell them. Right. They lose the value. They lose the, they, they lose the, the hunt. And it's just worried about reselling and worried about flipping a shoe. And that's, that's what, that's what hurts my feelings when I see <laughs> kids and, and I try to talk to them, you know, we're going to talk about comfort and cushioning and all that now, but uh, seeing them out there and seeing, you know, shots fired, seeing people like Benjamin kicks, I loved him a lot more when he wasn't trying to be a rapper, you know. So Wait, it's what, what okay. yeah. trying to be a okay. rapper. Yeah, yeah. You know, no, but you feel me? It's I, like, yeah, it's no, like I, it's, I see the angle you're coming from. It's it's real talk. It's like you know, him getting mad at Antonio Brown because he says business is booming. Mm -hmm. You didn't come. You up didn't with come the up phrase. with the term, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's not yeah. being bitter. That's a fact. Yeah. So for me, it's it's that, and kids look up to people like him when they should look up to other people that have been in the game. Right. When I talk to a kid and they don't know who Jeff Staple is, mm -hmm. you know, they don't know who Buscemi is, you know, and- A lot of them don't even know who Michael Jordan is. They know of him as a meme. Yeah, they know, well, they know him as a shoe. Well, that, the Jordan it's, brand's great. Right. You know, and uh, uh, yeah, I think, I think when you lose that and you're not able to express it to the kids, it's, it's like someone holding on to Michelangelo statues or, or, or stuff like that and not telling people why they're the so story valuable of why they, yeah. and why they're, why they're historical, what kind of wars they survived. You know, people made casts of Michelangelo statues during the world wars because they were afraid they were going to lose that art. Right. You know what I mean? Right. 
you don't talk about that. Right. You know, so it's like, to me, it's the, the uh, we got to take it back and we have to have voices like you all. Like, you know, I got so much love for the Sneaker Ring fan, but like Afro Kicks, like I, everyone that has that, you all are doing a great job because you're bringing the voice back of the people that actually have the history and we're able to back slap the bullshit yep. and be like, yo, kid, sit down and take notes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the whole thing. I don't give. Yeah. I, I have so much love for people like 2Js, JC and, and Mickey and all, and Kais, you know. But at a certain point, you have to stop feeding the hype beasts and start feeding the knowledge mm -hmm. and teach them why these are so hot. Right. What's up with the, with the four silhouette, you know? Yeah. Why is it hot? Because it's cause. Do you understand how cause started? Right. Or are you just buying these because you're dick riding a fashion like tsunami of bullshit? Yeah. You know, so. I mean, uh, I mean uh, is that what a, you're talking about, opinionated? Is it, am I, am I, I think you're getting close. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my, 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 we're right. scratching the surface. <laughs> okay, just a second. <laughs> now, there's a phrase that we throw around here quite often that every sneaker has a soul and every soul has a story. Yeah. And those stories need to be told. And I think there needs to be a healthy balance of hype as well Agreed. as history. Well, know? and that's, so I mean, that's why, like, it's like people that I think do a great job of uh, keeping that line level is Kais, is Mickey, mm -hmm. is two J's right because they also even in their vlogs some of their vlogs are like super like jump cutty like right crazy but there's nuggets in there giving you Absolutely. some information that's yep. giving too. you and like that I I I, I watch Kaisa's vlogs mm -hmm. I Mickey's the homie and and you know with Jay Jay when you when you pull him back and you talk to him and like he knows what he's talking about absolutely he's not just a shop owner you, you got to so turn it up a little bit for YouTube and all that, too. UN, much love to Mag Park, Kais. Like, Shout Kais out my the, boys at Riff as well. Yeah, Riff is, Riff is another one mm -hmm. of those places that you can go in and it's like one of those, it's like the old barber shop. Exactly. You can go in and talk to anybody working at Riff and they're telling you stories. They know, exactly. Like, you can yeah. sit on the porch with them motherfuckers. Yep. And, and like that. And so, so like that, you know, it's the same with UN. Like, like Mean Cats from UN. The Mag Park fam, that crew is just, they're just so dope. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and again, when you, when you sit down or when you talk or even catch a one minute conversation with Kais, it's like you tell he has the love for it. He's not yeah. just buying it because it says Supreme on it. Yeah. You know, so uh, the sadness is, is there's not enough of those. Right. And too much of the other. Too much of a kid that has a camera and is vlogging and is super rich. No offense to anybody that's rich. I know you. I wonder who you're speaking <laughs> you know, of. No, but, but like, but you know what I'm saying. But like, just because they're rich, they got it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm just because they're rich. You, you, you feel me? Ooh. Yeah. I'm just saying. So, uh, <laughs> dude, storytelling is everything. I mean, that's that's why we bring that element into you everything that we it, do. Man. Is because without the storytelling, the culture and the community is lost, and it just becomes history at that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's that's but why. But what is history the, when it's not taught? Right. And it's. But, but again, Nothing. that's it becomes yeah. a blog post. It's just and information that gets lost in translation. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what the, it, it's not important. Yeah, it's yeah. recorded. It's there. It lives yeah. there somewhere. Mm -hmm. But without somebody really bringing it to the table and telling you what it's all about, that's why we bring on people that know their shit that Hell have yeah. been lived through it and, and want to talk about it. And it's seeding that information in little by little. I feel like over a long period of time, we will actually kind of be able to pull people back in. We're educating while we're entertaining. Right. Yeah. So we're talking and we're telling people what's up. But through like the come up and that yeah. sort of thing, like we One, get, we're able to give people stories. It's entertaining, and they may not realize it, but that kid just learned about Jeff Staple and the riot, or yes. Clark Kent and yeah. the linens, or whatever it is. So it, it, it's it, those conversations it, in a really cool way. And mm -hmm. it's not the resellers' job. So I want to reiterate: this is not a, a jab at resellers. You know, this is a jab at the people reselling. It's like, if you want to be a fuck boy and push up at the front of the line <laughs> and be like, yo, <laughs> right, right, right. yo this, can we have a fuck boy count? Yo, I got 15 people with me. We run into the front. Bro, back in the day, you would have caught one. Quick. But now, because there's a bunch of 14-year-old kids in the front of the line, they don't understand. You, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. So they're bullied, which I don't agree with anyways. That's why Not I okay. love raffles. That's why I love lotteries. That's, you know, that's why I love that because it's taken the violence out of it and the hunt is not the same. Yep. So, you know, props to everybody that's doing it real. No props to the fuck boys. <laughs>
<laughs> we definitely need to get a Nelson uh, fuckboy fuck counter, counter during this yeah. episode. <laughs> so That's for true. tonight's episode, we chose a theme of comfort. And this was something that John and Dano actually brought to the table. So I want to let you guys kind of take the floor and, and speak about how this topic came about and just some of the ways that uh, you have changed from, you know, being more about fashion and more into function and comfort sure. now. This came about because I bought like six pairs of Air Force Ones in the past like two months and they all feel completely different. Mm. Some of them are, most of them are Lowe's, mm. but they're like uh, the, the Primeros, the Lowe's Latin Primeros, Heritage yeah. one. Like mm -hmm. those are so fucking fire looking, period. Yeah. But they're so comfortable. Yeah. There's just something, I think it might be the icy outsole. Uh, the tra the translucent yeah. outsole. There's just like a little extra mm. layer yes. of cushion there that you actually end up feeling. And then I think it's the new buck on the toe box. Like it doesn't, it's not like resisting. It's and not pushing into your toes when you, yeah. yeah. It's just easy to go. It's crazy though those sat on shelves. Yeah. I yeah. wish they were still sitting on shelves. Yeah, I, I, bought the, I bought those. I, I didn't account. get them. Yeah. yeah. No yeah. rush. Like they always like, you still have those? Yeah. So has yeah. it been something, so I, I know you say that with the Air Force Ones, has it been something you've been more conscious of lately on function and comfortability uh, as opposed to like your early years of just collecting? I don't think collecting? I'm like per se like you who like you had like some back issues and you wanted to have mm -hmm. like some more comfort specifically. I right. didn't make a switch for that reason, but I, I definitely want to remain comfortable. I have worn things that are uncomfortable just because they looked cool. <laughs> like I wore Absolutely. my Yeezys to ComplexCon. Those are too small for me. Oh, the OG, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. my yeah. foot has grown. Mm -hmm. The difference in support from V1 to V2 is insane. Like He's talking about the, the Nikes. Nikes. Yeah. The oh, Air Yeezys. Oh, Yeezys. gotcha. Oh, yeah. Those but they were too right. small for him, and he wore them just because. But I want to yeah. take it back. So <laughs> Did you bandage your, your toes to put them in? <laughs> He's like so a dancer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Air Force One conversation. Yeah. Now, on the flip side of that coin, we both own a pair of the, the all over print logo yeah. Air Force Ones that they dropped. You have a pair of those? Yeah. Okay. So those on the other side of the coin are very uncomfortable. Yeah, they're just and stiff. And they don't it's move. The, and it's, it's a leather. Yeah, it's it's yeah. the imprint. It's just... Yeah, because yeah, they had to exactly I mean, the stamp it on all... Yeah. All that stamping is taking away the malleability of the yep. leather. And totally. not just that, but it actually stops the... The whole outsole really doesn't give as much. Well, you, yeah, it's like a piece of metal on top. Well, that's There's a mali, but it's, like cha it's like, it's like chain mail. Yeah. It's like yeah. when back in yeah. medieval times, the, the thicker the chain mail, the less movement you had, the more protection you had, the less movement. It's like mm -hmm. when, you have a, when you have a logo basically heat embossed and mm -hmm. painted, mm -hmm. it's separating the leather and just tightening it up is doing yeah. this. It's all that extra rigidity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that goes along the but whole they look length of the midsole. So then the whole shoe itself is stiffer. It's crazy. You wouldn't think it would make that much of a difference, but it clearly does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got a pair of those NBA IDs. Same thing. Th those look like really nice plush. It looks uh, pub like pebbled leather. Tumbled. But it, it tumbled, yeah. But, but then you both like have, don't you both have the Lux high top yes. ones? Yes. And no, like the insole on those, those joints is like, a, like a it's like a lift, a lift <laughs> kit in your shit too. They changed the construction <laughs> of <those. laughs> That is right. like the like foam insole. Like it is in an old area. Yeah, I wore those right. to comp uh, not comp Agenda Vegas. Agenda yeah. Vegas. Yeah. And that's an all day trade show. If anybody's been to trade show before, you know it is a brutal. You don't nightmare. wear Air Yeezys, I'll tell you that much. All right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I rocked those Air Force One, like those the Lux and those were crazy. Yeah. Um, and I had a great day. And no one really knew what they were. <laughs> <laughs> right, right yeah. No bunions. But there's no. a, what is it? The, is it the, the Lunar Force yeah, insole? Those are lunar, is that what yeah, it is? They're yeah, they're the inner. The inner yeah. Of the yeah. Yeah. It's so crazy thick. For you, Nelson, because you cop a lot of sneakers. And you're, you have a very wide spectrum of what mm -hmm. you cop. But like tonight, you're wearing the Pharrell NMD Trails. Like, what is it for you that you look for now in a shoe as far as is it all about comfort? Or do you sometimes just get shoes to flex just because you know, like. I will. I mean. <laughs> I will get shoes to flex. Right. That but those aren't your everyday drivers. They're not my, no, no. Yeah. I, I got to tell you, like, uh, 97s, Boost, and that's Asics mm -hmm. are, like, my top three com comfort ones. Yeah. And, and it's, for me, it's definitely, I'm getting older. I have health yeah. issues, you know. It all comes playing, into play. Yeah, playing sports for your whole life, and then yep. now your knees are giving out in your 40s. Like, the... My Adidas has done it right, yep. you know, with a technology that was given to Nike first. You know, they yeah. snatched it up as they see it. Uh, the hiking, the trails, mm -hmm. uh, again, something else that like Fear God did, like Jerry did. 
like this kind of like military boot, the mm. hiking trail, there's something about the bottom sole. Yeah. Vibram does it well with brand black. Mm -hmm. It's like there's something with that extra layer of just support or, or I mean, I don't even know if it's the texture. It just gives it a little bit of. I think the texture moves with no, the way that with, you walk. Exactly. Yeah. It's just, it just feels better. It feels structural. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I am definitely everyday drivers are more comfort. Yeah events and stuff like that. Right. I brought a couple examples that we'll pull out I'll, later. But. I'll pull out the first little okay, example because go. it goes off of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so Boom. I brought with me the Asics Extra Butter Ghostface mm -hmm. collab. Mm -hmm. And hottest shoe, this, in my opinion, at Complex Con. This, okay. so aside from, so from a design standpoint, I'm in love with it just because mm -hmm. there's all kinds of little bells and whistles and yeah. hickeys on them. Uh, <laughs> and they're dope. Like, they really are dope. ostrich leather. Ostrich. Yeah. I think you um, said it's almost like too numerous to fucking... Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, there's like, so you'll, you'll many different something. components of the shoe that I won't even get into it. But when it comes to rigid outsole affecting comfort, I want to say that this definitely captures that for me. So right now, this is the most comfortable shoe that I'm rocking. Yeah. And I didn't think that that would be the case at all when I copped them. I was just like, these look fly. Yeah. But uh, in fact, this whole kind of duck boot outsole the vibe aggressive tread. definitely adds to what's going on yeah. when, mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. when I'm stepping. I definitely, and I think, I mean, to your point moves. too, it's something about like, if you are hiking and you're on trails and things like that, you have, you that. have to be comfortable in those shoes. So yeah. that is a huge part of it as well. Yeah. And then you got gel technology going on in here. Yeah. Right. I don't know enough about that to really speak on it. I was going to reach out and have uh, Samir oh. FaceTime in to just to talk about Asics Tech a little bit because mm. I don't know enough about the whole gel technology. And I have some other pairs of of gel lights and I don't feel that. This, when I step, I feel the gel. I feel yeah. like I'm on like some old Dr. Scholl's commercial or something. <laughs> like, I'm like, I feel like I'm in like the goo, like it's dope. Like, Yo, when, when we were at yeah. uh, Agenda Long Beach, I, that was the first time I wore my Yeezys. And I, I think you caught me. I was just standing there like bouncing, bouncing back and forth. Yeah, like, balls of your feet. yeah <laughs> it's just something about it. And you know, uh, Dan, I mentioned it earlier, like I messed up my back a few years ago and that's when I fell in love with the Ultra Boost. That, when I first stepped in it, I didn't really like, I, did, I wasn't aware of it because I have so many shoes. I switch out shoes every day. Like it's just a thing. But then when that became an issue and I wanted something that I could wear every day and I knew it was going to have support for what I needed. When I started wearing the ultra boost every day, I realized like this boost technology is actually like, it is the best for comfort yeah. and as far as just like being able to kind of shock absorb and all those things yeah. that you need when you have bad joints and stuff like that. Think about a mattress made out of boost technology. Oh my yeah, God. Isn't that that, that purple one? Everyone's oh, is that oh, there is, oh, it's, okay. a, it's okay. a pillow or the something, right? The one? <laughs> it comes with an auto-tune pack too. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, talking about the boost, one thing I did learn was that the Ultra Boost and the original NMD R1 don't feel the same. Because mm -hmm. if you look at the NMDs, they have those, uh, was it the plugs. EVA plugs the or EVA whatever? The plugs, yeah. And well, the, they make them stiff. Right. The one yeah. in the back actually goes all the way through the boost, which doesn't allow it to give as much as it needs right. to. And that was one thing I was like, damn, these NMDs really aren't it doing it the way. The like the, the one in the back, the back. it goes the through, kind of like hooks around the heel. So it it's gives like you a heel. U. Yeah. But that's, and that's a performance thing, you know, as well, far as yeah. that goes to cage it a little bit in right. some way. Yeah, but when it's a fly, when, when it's a prime knit, Upper, prime is some of the you're most. You're not doing you're not anything. Supporting yeah, shit. you're not no, doing you're not anything crazy. Shit. In that. And that's yeah. the thing too is, and we talk about this whole conversation about Nike passing on Boost technology and all that, and that, the reason why that is is because it didn't meet Nike standards when it came yeah. to technology. That's my performance. It wasn't about yeah. comfort. It was about they're a technology company when it comes to performance. Yeah. So try doing a lateral movement in some boost, you're going down. Yeah, you're rolling you know your mean? ankle. It's not the same. It's great for straight. And less is Yeezys. I oh, will oh, say oh, the oh, Yeezys, saying, like, they so, bow out enough yeah. to where you yeah. can kind of well, get yeah, that. It's all about they have those you, midsoles covered. Right. They have that, so like, I'll pull yeah. out, I'll I pull out one. Like feature on those. Yeah. These right here, EQTs. There's so much boost on those. The, but that's what I'm saying. So, yeah. so yeah. Much. If you look yeah. at the science behind it, it's saying, we heard you. We're going to cover you with the cage. Right, mm -hmm. very sturdy. Yeah. But then we're going to extend the boost out a little bit. We're not going to we're not going to have it tapered down. We're actually giving you a shelf. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll ball in these. 
I may break I can an, see that. Dude, I may break an ankle because I'm not that good at basketball, <laughs> but I'll ball. Cyrus, you know what's good. So I'd like uh, to see a one-on-one game with you and John Buscemi. Oh bro. my God, <laughs> hey, bro, come You're out! You're like to, his Puerto Rican cousin. Okay, that, <laughs> I, 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 that would be dope. I'm down. Let's set John? it up. Pay per view, bro. Let's, Let's set it up. This on sneaker ring. But yeah, this right here. Yeah. This, not just because it's Mastermind, but I think they did an excellent job of uh, the the cut of the silhouette. Like if mm. you look at it, it's kind of like Frankenstein. You know, all, bit, of the, yeah. all of the seams are coming out, but it's all strategic. The, the, le- the leather in t- inside part of the, the lining. silhouette. No, yeah. not the lining. The, oh. the, the, they're in, in here, oh, oh, okay. you know, and then matching it up with the neoprene style right. in the back to give you the cushion, but also it's sturdy as crap, mm-hmm. you know. And then you, get the, you have that prime knit in the front for breathability. Right. Everybody push hates. Yeah, everybody hates athletes. But push in. Put your fist in and see how much... Fist like it. that boost. Fist so, that. Go, come on, you know you Nelson, like it. I got the base Fisting pair. it. Huh? I got the base pair. That was the first boost that I bought. I was like, this all right, I'm crazy. In. Black or the white? The, right? black. the black. Crazy. Yeah. yeah, and it's ridiculous. That's why I bought them, though, because I'm like, this is, if I'm going to do the boost, I'm going to get this one that's like insane. Yeah. I didn't realize this was all sweet. Very, very, very similar. The, the bait one. Yeah. Shout out to the it bait has, family. Yeah, did a great job. Gauge, and it has yeah. the same midsole. It's just, you know, it's one of those things that, like, that takes what you're talking about, like breaking ankles, but they did a great job of mixing fabrics and materials mm-hmm. on the on the silhouette yeah. that it gives you a little bit of everything right are you going to last in those you'll probably break out the toe if you're if you're legit 11 you're really, yeah. and, <laughs> and, and, and you're stopping and you're freaking yeah. and you're, like, yeah, you're gonna you're that. gonna break through the front yeah, eventually absolutely you know but it, it's it the support wise it's it feels like you're walking on clouds right and, and that that eqt so the same sole with a little bit of modification on the base. Just even ones. pushing on the side of it. Yeah, like you can it's tell. Crazy. Like, yeah. yeah. That, that is really crazy. Right. And it's cool that when they first brought this back with the boost, we sat in the office and watched the story of how they took it from the original right. and the things that they flipped. And that alone, like, I think changed my mind on it completely because you didn't really understand, like, the ones we saw were, like, black with a little bit of pink, and then it showed that the pink was the opposite end of the color wheel that they used on the green and original, and, like, mm-hmm. it was just such a good story that they told, but then to, the, to, to then put all this boost on there and then even give, like, the three stripes in the boost yeah. and all, like, they did such an excellent job with this, and you can tell, like, just from your testimonial, like, this thing is, it's kind of a tank, and it, it will stand up, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, saying all that, they're, they're the most cushioned yeah imaginable and that's including this mm-hmm. that yeah crazy. i'm a vapor max kid now like i really do enjoy the vapor max the silhouette is good for I my big ass your feet first pair you were very hesitant i was yeah and then he yeah. just was rocking i'm like yo this absolutely is, and this it's is dope. it does not stand it it is not in the same category as an ultra boost but i do appreciate like you got the i don't know if this is like rubberized they don't stink <laughs> It just smell good. Uh, <laughs> they got like the spray on rubber and all that, but then like you got the different textures of uh, flying it on here. Yeah. You got the fly wire. Like they did a lot with bringing so many of their different technologies together yeah. with a new, um, you know, Air Max. Um, I don't know what you would call it, the technology, I guess, yeah. the way that it's they've like done airbags. it. Like, airbags, yeah. 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 Like, but, they did such a great job with that. Yeah, Nike with the Vapor Maxes and, and with a couple of their, their silhouettes now, I like that they're doing like the shoe version of Linex. Mm, you know, Linex yeah. is something that is used in cars to I protect think about that. a coat and a seal, and that's right. that plastic. It's like almost like a spray on Linex. Right. So it's protecting the wires. It's protecting the outside mm-hmm. that I was talking about. These that would that would like rip. Right. You're not yeah, gonna you rip that toe, toe exactly because yeah. it's like Linex. It's like that Dura Seal. Yeah, but it still gives an enough to on that wear. Shit, like... you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, so while we're on the topic of boost, uh, Adidas actually did something pretty wild today, and they let one person buy 40 pairs of boost sneakers for seven thousand um, dollars. So weird. <laughs> the, it's kind of crazy, but they actually sold out in five minutes. So, but sold out. Wait, what? One we, wait, one person. So only one person was able to buy. One person was able to buy the whole, uh, they called it the Instant Boost Collection. How many people were able to buy this large One collection? One person. 
only one person. Only one person for seven thousand uh, like dollars. Oh, kind of so it had the spectrum of their whole Boost technology silhouettes. Right. Yeah. Got it. Okay. The Instant Boost collection offered forty different silhouettes in a oh, wow. single one purchase package of seven thousand dollars, which is equivalent to one hundred and seventy-five dollars per shoe before taxes. Um, in the bundle, there were shoes such as the Ultra Boost Four Point Oh, which actually just dropped today. The Pharrell Human Race and MD Trail, which Nelson has on his feet right now. The EQT Support 9317, Crazy Explosive Low 2018 PK, Harden Volume 1 LS, and, and many more. But there were no Yeezys included in this collection. So if you, um, do you, <laughs> you can, I don't know if you can still go to the site, but you can go to the site and see actually like yeah. all 40 that they had pulled up. And, and no Yeezys, that is funny. Right. So they had everything from, you know, just regular GRs. They wow. had like the Nikes in there. Just, yeah. there what was a new name? Oh, the, the, the i5-923, excuse me. <laughs> Whatever that um, is. But <clears throat> within five minutes, somebody pays seven Gs plus tax for all 40 of those. Wow. That's a, it's kind of a steal, right? Yeah, 175. I mean, if you yeah. think about it, 175 yeah. per, per these shoe. Were, There's plenty of them that have... These were retailing... Well, resale shout out, value. Shout out to yeah. BBC. Mimi, Just, Loic, and everybody, because these were the BBC exclusives. Mm. But like these were running 250. Right. Retail. I mean, yeah. Like yeah. 175 is a solid overall. And when you think about it, it's not crazy to spend that amount of money on shoes. Like we do it over time. Yeah. But if you got it to drop it one pairs time, total? Like 40. 40 pairs. Yep. Like that's it's a month <laughs> and a half. It's pretty wild. <laughs> it's a month and a half. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously though, but yeah. it, and that's the thing, like you're saying though, 175 for some of these shoes is kind of like, eh, but then you think about, like, the ones that you can get, those, just the two Pharrells up top, like. Already, that's, that's over a stack. Right. You know, so if, you know. If you decide to go down the, the route of the reselling. Resale, yeah. But it's a cool story. Like, it's dope that they, you know, they released the Ultra Boost 4.0 today on top of doing this as well. Super like, dope. it like gives them a little bit. Adidas did. It's not like yeah, it wasn't, it, it wasn't like a, another hey, a store. You don't yeah. like those? They just no. They just, they don't fit right for me. They don't. Yeah. I have a pair. I have that exact pair. Why not? Yeah. Because I couldn't get the OG R ones, yeah. so yeah. I got those. What don't you like? I don't like the the how what, high what it about comes. Yeah, the, how high it comes, and I don't like the uh, cage the on XR1 it. The XR one cage. Uh, it just sits weird. Like when you're walking, it's like if you have a wide foot like myself, it's like yeah. hitting your outside. Oh, I can see that. Hit yeah. that little bunion. Yeah. yeah. Come on, dog. <laughs> Think of the wide-footed fuck. I feel you. I got narrow feet, so it works for me. But I don't like how how high up that like tongue. I guess you call it a tongue comes. Yeah. Cause then when you start to walk, and then it pushes over, and then you get that weird little hump. It's just, yeah. it, I don't know. It, it just don't work right. I don't though. like it. But it's sick that you know. Like I said, we were talking about Boost. Adidas knows for a fact that Boost technology is what has propelled them to where they are now. Yeah. And they're like, hey, you know, if you're really rocking with us, like, how do you think that meeting we go. went? That's a good question. You know, like, who do you think walked that in and was like, I've got an idea. I got an idea. <laughs> we're going to take one of all these shoes and we're going to sell it to one guy. <laughs> well, if and I'm not mistaken, walked out of the room. Well, probably. you know, it, it's, I mean, it's a very. We've seen, we've seen worse in marketing. And I'm not saying played. it's bad yeah. at all. <laughs> I'm just saying, who called that meeting, walked in and pitched that? Mm -hmm. We're going to sell shoes to one person. Now, what it I was think... Wex and like three other dudes smoking <laughs> a joint in Portland. Like, shout out to so Wex. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> Wex. Hit blood. blood. Yeah. So, <clears throat> <clears throat> let's do 30. I've got an idea. Let's do 40. Let's sell yeah. one yeah. shoe to 40 people. Now, uh, what? Let's, let's sell, sell 40, 40 shoes to one guy. <laughs> yeah. Genius. Now, Here's what I bonus. think would have been a real like. Ill move is if they would have done this when the off white tens were dropping. Ooh, I mean, the, right. the, the, the ten the collection. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But, now, but now think about this. This is a case study for them. True. Yeah. They're saying, how volatile is the market or how hungry is the market that we can sell an anthology of boost? Honestly, mm -hmm. if I like, like right if now. you think about it, movies do it, studios do it. Like you can get the Criterion set which I'm has boost. all of these movies in one. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is the Criterion set of Boost. And Adidas is saying, will it. people buy bulk? Right. It's five it's minutes. It's proven, yeah, exactly. So I guarantee you there's, I guarantee there's sure. 15,000 people that probably would have done the same thing mm -hmm. in the world. And that's the thing too, if somebody had just got hip to Boost and has some bread to drop, yeah. it's yeah. perfect for you. Yeah, there's yep. a starter kit. There's I a great you, starter kit. I want to see it's like perfect. in a couple weeks who got it, I bet you, I don't want to. I don't want to assume, but I can almost 
All right, I'm not going to almost guarantee. I wonder if it was one of these, like, gamer kids that's, like, getting... Because if you look at a lot of the, like, Call of Duty pros, they're getting on their sneaker game yeah. now, and a lot of them are getting on the boosts, we're and they doing, have money. I got to tell you, we're doing a lot of cultural consulting in e-gaming, mm -hmm. and it's all about sneakers, yep. women, and hip-hop. Straight up. And I, 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 I will put my money and agree with you. Yeah. Either that or Boost God. I was like, hey, let right. me get these, because I want to flex. For real, because I want to flex. Yeah, because yeah, it's funny that we haven't seen any, like, of the blogs pick up, like, who it was or somebody getting on Twitter and being like, yeah, I, I copped this or whatever. So it'll be interesting to see. Now we just follow people's timelines of assumptions. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> he wore the red. Mm. <laughs> Off that list. <laughs> uh, so Adidas has been killing it with the boost, as we know, for the past, going on three years now. And the next phase in Adidas technology is their 4D Futurecraft. So in 2018, they will be releasing the Alpha Edge 4D, which comes with the 3D printed sole that has been a success this year in a new rendition. And um, well, I can't remember the, I think it was just called the Adidas Futurecraft, yeah, the original yeah. one that they released. Yeah. Uh, so they're, they're doing the Alpha Edge, which will be a little bit easier for people to purchase. I haven't seen uh, this. And yet. it'll be coming in both men and women sizes. Three colorways of the sneaker are reportedly dropping in May and will feature a 40 printed, 40 printed midsole in linen green. Um, and the Alpha Edge 40 drops May 18, or excuse me, I May 2018 so for $300. One of the ugliest. Now, the upper is not easy on the eyes, but the fact that they are making this technology so easily accessible this to the public is, is kind of breaking episode. ground. <laughs> it's breaking ground. And I, I think, like, we looked at some at Urban Necessities. The original ones seemed very rigid. Yeah, they didn't rigid. look like they, yeah. they would have too much give. Yeah. But then you just got to... I don't remember. Not that many. But it was very but limited. Thousand. Yeah, it was very limited. Yeah, but then you're going to put, you know couple hundred pounds on it potentially that that was and, my case and that's too. a whole other ball game no 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 but no, but then but the it, second it, I, it edition it performs to my knowledge yeah it performs well with that kind of well they did a second one and the second one was much like it it gave a lot yeah, more yeah, yeah, yeah. and if oh, you, so we looked at the first we one looked at the original one that they dropped and that was, was like the all black right or it was a line no it was the, the the i thought the all black was the second one Jack? it may have been i don't okay. i don't i don't recall um but the fact that they're doing this, the shoe's $300, which in today's world, isn't that crazy? You know, if you think about a lot of the stuff that yeah. we put. Yeah, if it is an ultra-performance sneaker, people will pay for mm -hmm. like And for it to be sneaker. the first of its kind, Yeah, too, if we're talking you know? about, you know, not that these brands have to really shift their money around in that way, but if you're talking about something that's really cutting edge and mm -hmm. this money is going towards that R&D that went into creating that product, mm -hmm. so Well, I don't it. like that I see Alpha Bounce on the upper. Like the the eyelets remind me of the Alpha Bounce, and I shouldn't think of another model right they, off the This, bat. I mean, this is an attempt of selling a soul, right? Not selling a shoe. And that's the thing. It's like all of the focus was on let us create a three D printed soul mm -hmm. that is functional mm -hmm. and can sell in the mass market. Right. It's ugly because they didn't concentrate on what you're talking about, the aesthetic of it. But let that move, like let it grow. It'll, it, it'll, it it'll evolve. Grow. I know it's in the mm. beginning. The same, no, sure, sure. Same no, I'm, not, the, I'm, not, I'm just giving, I'm just giving my opinion. Adapt. Sure. Right? Not yeah. the most impressively beautiful shoe in the world. I think it but looks But it's the technology Especially the new uppers they do. Have you seen the new, like, the digi the camo and shit they doing? I'm not mad at that. And I'm, I like the red. You like the yeah. red yeah. and yeah, yellow yeah, ones, I don't you? I like, I like the hyper adapt. They're like cheap. Silhouette. Yeah. 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 Like this, I, know, that's what I, I, don't, I don't know. I just this. But when this you start is, implementing the technology in a different you're silhouette, petting, you're, you're, you're putting upper. Yeah, you're putting a mm. high-end technology or or like new age technology on an entry level outlet mall silhouette. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. it's 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 like putting a pair of Pirellis on a Chevy Volt. <laughs> <laughs> that's my opinion. You know, I it's got like, these four Giatos on my yeah, Chevy Volt, baby. baby. <laughs> <laughs> what you know about these Lexani, son? No, so it's, 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 that's just my opinion. It's, it's yeah, like, yeah. It, it's just. No, I'm not me, disagreeing looks, with you. It, it looks awkward because it's like you would have thought if they were mass producing this, mm. they would have paid a little bit more attention to detail to the silhouette. You want to put them on? I though, wonder feel if what they that, feel like. Not, not, not say you would rock them. I know if you don't like the. Oh, I'm sure like. they're comfortable as crap. Yeah. I but wonder I, if that would have changed the price, though, if they decided to do something a little bit more. I wouldn't buy these for comfort. No. Because they're not, in my opinion, probably going to feel that much better than a pair of EQTs, in my opinion. Not enough to where I'm going to spend $300 and have a shoe that looks like shit. Mm -hmm. Like, even my comfort shoes will have to have some sort some of, element of style. style to it. 
Yeah. You know, so it, it I mean, that's the, that's, that's why we buy what we buy. Like yeah. we're going to look for comfort, but we're still going to look for something that looks dope. Right. So it's like, you might as well buy a pair of Skechers if you want comfort. I'm on my Skechers. Is that? Yeah, we, we went all over there. Okay. I know, my bad. <laughs> we're not my going bad. back to Skechers. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. I mean, I, I guess it, it, it's just my opinion. That's what I'm saying. Like they could no, take yeah, a little bit course. more time. No question. On the I want to try them on and see. What I think that's the that's the main thing, just to see what to they feel, feel like that. to walk around. But, but would you pay three hundred dollars? Absolutely not. It's no. hard to say because we only have one photo. Now, a lot of times I will so see. So you think by looking at it from the front, it's no, gonna no, look no. That, have it's you, gonna has there ever been a time when you saw a shoe on the shelf or on a fo- on the blogs, but then you saw it on somebody's feet and you were like, "Fuck, I could actually like get down with that." Yeah, on foot images. Guys, I want to play a little game here, real them. quick. Some of, some of the people that are listening aren't watching. I want to have Nelson describe what the shoe is. <laughs> <laughs> Nelson, can you describe to our listeners what the shoe yeah, looks paint like this picture. in your best opinion? It looks. Like Detailed Rick out. from The Walking Dead needed to fix his old Adidas. So he took tent threads out of the tent. And he said, you know what? The side of my shoe's kind of fucked up. I need to resew it. So then he re- resews the side of it and says, you know what? I think my soles will look a little bit better if I just pop a bunch of holes in it to let some air pop through and let some cushioning go. That's what it looks like. All right, like. well, there you go. Rick from The Walking Dead, everybody. There you go. <laughs> Was that good enough? That was good. Okay. Yeah, okay. Hi, yeah, Thank yeah. You. Thank you. No, no I'm but, just, I'm sorry. I, yeah, but no, back to my, like, sometimes you'll see a shoe in a, and I could just be speaking for myself that may not look that great first, at first glance. Yeah. But you see, this happened to me all the time when um, I first got into like foams. Oh, God. I would see, that's the woman's version. Oh, God. I fuck with that one. That one's a, a little I bit like better. I like that one see? better. Uh, I would see Fran Relations do like his shit on YouTube and you know granted he wears like a size 4 and I wear a 14 but seeing the on foot like photos and videos kind of changes my perspective and my perception of certain things so this may be a shoe that when we see more like the inside the medial version uh, I think that's the medial could be completely different you know it might change the the whole aesthetic of the shoe we never know yeah but I think Fran's a 6 (laughs) now we'll see I guess whatever it's okay um, getting yeah. off of Adidas, we've been kind of riding they uh, they sack a little bit too hard this this episode. Although they are crushing it right now, and yeah, I'm a, killing the game. I'm a boost guy. I can't can't really um, you know deny it. But this is something that is a little bit exciting to me because I remember when I got my graduation money in 2004. The first thing I bought was a pair of these shoes, and Nike shocks are back. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, one of, oh, going? when they see yes. the back. <laughs> yes. One of Mark Parker's key announcements during the Investor's Day was the return of the Shocks, the springy cushion innovation that took the sneaker world by storm in the early 2000s. Nike Shocks cushioning was all the rage of performance wear across several silhouettes, like the Shocks BB4 and Vince Carter's signature shoe line, mm. while sporty designs like the R4 and the NZ, which is what I had, were quickly adopted in urban streetwear. The new design, the shock, Shocks Gravity, however, comes with a complete redesign of the cushion system and a unique uh, modernized upper that emphasizes lightweight construction. Also worth noting is the pull tab lacing system and the protruding grip on the tongue. Uh, the Nike Shocks Gravity released exclusively at the Sneak Easy in NYC and is expected to release worldwide soon. I love them. <laughs> I, 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 love, I love them. them. I know it's not the most like. I think it's just the nostalgia. Yeah, there like you that's go. really yeah, what it is. Well, like, that's great. Yeah, like just remembering what, because this was back when like shocks were one hundred and fifty dollars. Back when uh-huh. shoes weren't really that expensive like that. Yeah. So when I had my own money and I was able to go to the mall and give me some shocks in a size fourteen, god damn it, I went straight into Champ Sports, got me some shocks. They were the same. They were white and blue. They didn't have any red or gold on them. I got me white and red shocks, and this is back when champs had four tall tees for 20 bucks. I got two blue and two white tall tees. The blue was in 3X and the white was in 4X, so I could wear them in layers and I could let my shit pop. That Damn. shit was, All right. whew, I was killing them. Now, but Nike shocks, that, it, it wasn't the most comfortable shoe to say. Like, they definitely had a long way to go when it came yeah. to actually being able to do something with that, but I don't know. I think something about so it. So is this like, updated in any way? As it far did as the say that, yeah. Oh, the whole, the whole it's actually sealed in the right. shocks. Yeah. 
Whereas well, before, it looks like it just brings yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they've done the like combination airbag spring thing before, mm. which looked wild. Yeah, they were just trying too hard because it was like, all right, just let it go. <laughs> uh, for me, the shocks were like way popular for the girls in my like in mm. that time, like girl run actual girls that would like to run like cross country yeah, and shit yeah, like yeah. They actually ran in them because they were like cute. And functional, you know what I mean? Just because you could see this, this you know, yeah. the spring. I like the little grippy jam on the pull tab. On the tongue, yeah. yeah. On the tongue, yeah. <laughs> looks like an electronic toothbrush. And that something. lace system. <laughs> that lace system is dope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks it pretty looks cool. Yeah. Now, with a shoe like that being all one piece, it's not like you're really going to tie the laces anyway. So I feel like that is more for yeah. fashion and function. But, you know, some people may like to football lace their shoes. Yeah, it's I don't cool. Know. Let's see what Virgil does with it. It'll be, <laughs> <laughs> Damn. It'll be interesting to see how stiff. That plastic the, piece on the, the head. Yeah. 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 The, the I think in different colorways, this could be fire. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I enjoy the colorway. This way, is though. just, this is like the Olympics. This version. is their, exactly. Now, yeah. I like that little hit, too, on the toe. I like the yellow. On I the like, exactly. Yeah. So if you look under the actual black outsole, there yeah. is like a little, I, see. I don't even know what you want to call it. It's yes. definitely visible yeah. on the outsole. Right. Like when you flip it over for sure. There's a it's lot just, of weird details. Oh, what if that's The ribbons, yeah. for, it's not, is like that? Yeah, I guess it is fly wire. But then it's almost like inside of a ribbon or something like that. Um, them shits are dope, man. And I, like I said, it, oh, it looks like on the heel they also have that weird spongy thing too, or not spongy, the, the grip thing. Grip thing, yeah. yeah. Definitely for the so, pull on so, factor. Yeah, because yeah, that heel definitely looks like it comes pretty far up. I don't know, like I said, man, it's more nostalgia for me than anything. Now but I know it's what just, I'm getting you for your birthday. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of the pull on thing, and mm -hmm. can I go all the way back to the comfort thing? Yes, yeah. please. Uh, the we were and we were stuck on like the the actual outsole, like the the thicker ridges, and it actually makes a, a difference. Like I always think of the Zoom turfs, mm. you know, like the uh, who am I thinking of? Barry Sanders. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah, those you'd feel that difference with, yeah. with these shoes, and it uh, lo the new Lebrons have that going on. The new LeBrons are, are my you new with the 15s? favorite. Oh, this is shoes. life changing yeah. for him. Yeah, like I feel like I just found shoes for the first time again. Like it's like Damn. this shoe is fucking. It feels so good on, and to have that like pull thing like you were just saying. He wants all one. the pairs. I want all the pairs. And shout out that, to all the pairs. Hey, shout, shout out to Vince Carter. Yeah, we go back to the shock for a second because these are amazing, and that dunk is ridiculous. <laughs> that um, really made shocks right there. Yeah, he put his nuts on somebody's head. Like, <laughs> of course. Um, it was shocking. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Where's our uh, sound effect? Jack, can I get a little... <laughs> <laughs> or just throw water on yeah, it? Dig deep through the mini. No, 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 no. No, the moment is fast. The moment is fast. Uh, yeah. You don't have to whisper it. If you, oh, if you need a water, you can... <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt. Uh, nah, shocks for me. Thumbs up. I'm sure you probably won't be. I never indulging. had a pair, but yeah. You never gotten into shocks? Yeah, so for me, the nostalgia is not there. I understand. But, I, but those new pair look crazy. I'm kind of curious. I really like the like. colorway, to be honest. Yeah? Yeah. It is very Olympic esque, yeah. the way you mentioned it, though. I didn't even really think about that. Um, I just, I don't know. I enjoy them. I think it's not going to stand up to any of the technology that Nike even has or Adidas has right now in the moment. But for people like myself, it would probably bring back a little bit and. You know, it might get a little bit of surge for it may for Nike, you. but that's true. Sure. You never know. Yeah. You know, they've been spending nine years perfecting for the real. shocks. Nelson, I have a question. You say Seinfeld? Yeah, exactly. Seinfeld loves the shocks. So, oh, it, for if, yeah, uh, he's a huge shocks fan. Nice. What's what's a shoe that has some meaning for you, some nostalgia, that you would like to see brought back? Like mm. you said, Ooh. It's coming back. Ooh. 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 Honestly, all of my favorites have come back. 97s and 98s were my top. Yeah. So, like, to me, the last couple years from 2014 on, everything collabs, that you, yeah, it started to kind of. Everything that I wanted, like, I had ones, but like, 97s and 98s, were like, my, like, right when I got out, I was making guys. I was copping every 97, 98. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's like, to me, those are. Or let me ask you this. Did you ever off Funky One, like, how he was into that one? Like he's into shocks, and then maybe not the. <laughs> <laughs> didn't last forever. Uh, I mean, I would say Airwalk. Okay. But then they came back. Okay. Yeah, but then they were yeah. doing yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Like right. I was still rocking Airwalk when they were done, and they were getting sold at Payless. Uh huh. So like I was yep. fucking with Staple when he was doing his shit for Payless. So like, mm -hmm. it was not the 
most popular. It's all good though. Stuff, yeah, but no, yeah, yeah. But, but like, I had a lot of nostalgia this year when when they came, when Air Walks like came in hard, and it's like, mm -hmm. Air Walks a great case of a company being sold and sold, and people don't know what to do with it. Right. You know, you're yeah. you're you're a skater. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Air Walks back in the day were like the entry level. Like, yo, mm -hmm. I used to get clown for wearing Air Walks. Yeah, like, I you was can on afford both a sides, pair of Air Walks, like, right? Yeah. But like, it's like they were to me great great made shoes so mm -hmm. uh i'd say yeah i'd say probably like the last three to four years all the shoes that i had that were like man i wish they redid them bam yeah it's kind of hard to say that um, now tempos, because like, dude, came yeah. back hard yeah you know, i think a lot crazy. of what you know a lot of what nike specifically is kind of banking on is going back into the vault and bringing back stuff that a lot of the ogs really cared yeah. about and want to see you and know. making hybrids yep 97 ones Not, yeah exactly you know it's yeah. like like they're They've done a great. Nike took a year off, right? But I don't think they took a year <laughs> off. I think they were in the kitchen cooking. Yeah. And they were like, "No, it's all, no, it's good. Y'all catch up. It's good. We've yeah. been waiting for you, <laughs> you know." And no now the competition. Yeah. Uh -huh. we, every 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 economy, every industry needs competition. And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, come on, there's enough room for everybody. Absolutely. You know. So, uh, yeah, 97, 98. Again, again, 97, I, you know. Yeah, the oh, undefeated is I synced them. Come on. I synced Not like that. This <laughs> comfort, I'll rock 97s all day. Like I had the off-white ones Thank on the other day. Okay. And I mean, I don't know what Virgil did to the off-white ones, but they're even more comfortable. I don't know by making them the lack of white people of color. color. Yeah. If you you know? know? If because you, if you think about it, there's so much, there's so much uh, <sighs> stitching in these. Mm -hmm. But in, in was the off-white ones, there's Dan almost died over those. <laughs> yeah. Man, oh, oh, dude. Oh, oh, bro, bro, to kill my mother. If you had those tonight with the jacket, That's though. That's what I was just going oh, to say. Yeah. Damn. That would have set it off. I'm a ten and a half. If only you owned those. This looks retarded. Together. If only you owned a pair That's of those. That, man. I'm sorry. I'll put those back. <laughs> Yo, uh, Daniel's foot hadn't grown a size and a half. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> that works out, up, dude. Right. <laughs> oh, man. All right. The, the last topic that I wanted to speak on is I was saved this until the end just because it's it's not really um, a topic that I wanted to speak on, but it's something that's happening and it's it's been taken over in the entire year of 2017. But Chic Shoes has filed for bankruptcy, excuse me, bankruptcy after owing Nike over 16 million dollars. Uh, West Coast-based sneaker and streetwear retailer Chic Shoes filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy after incurring over $16 million in debt to Nike alone. The retailer has been reportedly seeking financials uh, for some time in an effort to avoid this move, but obviously the efforts have been unsuccessful. The company's owner points to the shrinking demand for brick-and-mortar retailers <laughs> in an already highly competitive space as the cause of the company's <laughs> apparel, uh, apparent downfall. As of now, Chic Shoes operates around 120 stores in 10 different states, all of which are very clearly now in jeopardy. Yeah, a lot of clearance Evolve. items. Evolve. Now, I hear you say that, but to back on this, this year is actually going to be the worst year on record for brick and mortar stores. Uh, retailers all around the world, or excuse me, all around the nation have announced plans to close more than 6,700 stores this year, beating the previous all-time high of 6,163 stores closing that occurred during the 2008 financial crisis. I mean, not to be a tough-ass businessman, Evolve. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. look at the markets, look at this. I don't feel bad for Chic. They tried to steal money. Because guess what, okay. they, they stole, they, they sold. To own Nike 16 million, mm -hmm. they had to have revenue. Mm -hmm. So that's mismanagement. And it said Nike alone. Nike yeah, alone. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, it's like, so like, where is that being spent? If you're leveraging things that you're selling, and you're selling it, and you're making revenue, but you're not, yet you're not paying the POs mm -hmm. that are right. owed for those, but you're using that money that you sold Nikes for, mm -hmm. which should be only to pay back Nike. Right. Right. Instead, it's instead it's being used and Robin Peter to pay Paul. Yeah, you're you're paying other stuff. Mm -hmm. So then, don't open so many shops. Stop having so many lights in your stores that your electric bills out the roof. You know, that, that, that's to say, and maybe do something for the culture or do mm -hmm. something for the industry. Right. You know, because you have places for every every stores that are closing. You have undefeateds. You have Bates. Mm -hmm. You have Sean with round mm -hmm. two. You have Mickey. Like because, again, 
they may be resellers, but they're also selling merch that's not resold. Right. You know, they're 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 becoming a legitimate hybrid of a retail resell, you know, mm-hmm. uh, model. You know. Now, do you think it's easier for those smaller brick and mortar stores to stay in business because the big mall stores are doing things like this? I mean, again, Chic has standalones and Chic has right. stores outside of malls. I but, just, the, but Chic compared to, to Undefeated or Round Two, you know what I mean? Like Round Two can, doesn't really fall in that category. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, I mean, Undefeated is not a small company to begin with. Like, it's not. Boutique, though. But it's, in the grand, like, like in yeah. The, yeah. I mean, I just, I personally think it's, it's to to run. Not only do am I part of the Bait Fam, but I own a retail store mm-hmm. on Melrose. I understand the the troubles of having to make sure we're covering our POs and we're handling sales accordingly. Right. That's the job of a responsible businessman. And when I hear someone saying they owe 16 million alone to a company like Nike, right. shame on Nike for not for not nipping not, stopping, not stopping it. Yeah. You know, that's on them. You know, yep. but that still doesn't make it right of what's happening. So mm-hmm. like, to me, it's just it, that be, that that then becomes a business ethics question yeah. versus a sneaker culture question. Absolutely, because it's just like, yes, brick and mortars are slowing down and they're closing. The sneaker industry is doing nothing but rising. Mm-hmm. So then, if you know your brick and mortars are hurting, make sure your online experience is there. Right. Make sure that your social real estate is there. Make sure that you're leveraging your social real estate to engage your audience to make sure that they are having a reason to visit your brick and mortar. Mm-hmm. That's where there's a detachment. Anybody needs consultation, hit us up. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like, that's, where, that's where the thing is, is these companies aren't connecting the dots of their full ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Because the brick and mortar, the online experience, the experiential, their social media real estate should all be talking to itself and working together to feed it to where there shouldn't be an issue. If they're not selling enough Nikes in store, they should be doing the right things on social media and on their online mm-hmm. to compensate for that. Right. So, um, so to give you another, just one more angle, just to that sounded kind a little bit. So I'm sorry. No, 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 no. yeah, that sounds that's educated that's just fuck. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, to me, look, we're talking about this whole situation, and it's. That's a lot of retail stores to go down. How many undefeateds are there? Five. Okay. Mm. So what, 160 something you said of these? Yeah, 160 you know, across 10 look, cities you th- or states. And obviously what happened here is, you know, they dig this giant hole in Nike and I'm sure other companies, but the minute that Nike says that they're pulling the plug and they're no longer gonna, gonna feed that, you know, nothing through the pipeline to them, they have no choice but to close their doors and, and go bankrupt. What else are they going to sell in there? Yeah. Imagine you took Nike off the shelves in there. Yeah. So you so, pull Nike right. and Jordan but brand out of there. So then, then what happens? Yes. Yeah, so, so then this goes back to the culture. Mm-hmm. If you're just growing for growth's sake and for the potential of making an extra dollar in a city, you're not doing anything to do your to create your cultural history. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why people travel to a bait. There's a reason why we, they keep opening stores. There's a reason why people travel to an undefeated because the cultural history is there. Absolutely. So therefore, if Sheik's doing nothing but just opening up, they're a payless. Right. Dude, right. When, it, when I saw it happening, I worked at Hollywood Highland like two years ago. There was the shoe palace shoe opened palace up right, right the there. Corner, yeah. the Sheik a couple blocks down, another store just popped up and, and then they'd opened one on Pico. and. It was just like it, just like you're saying, they yeah. were just popping up because it's mm-hmm. like, oh, people in these neighborhoods like to buy shoes and stuff. We're gonna open a whole store, elaborate build outs, yeah. and spend all this money on. Because someone and mortar. built a 73 page PPM business plan, sold it to an investor, and said, guess what? Through our projections based on these 10 stores, we're gonna make incremental money. Mm-hmm. Well, they didn't factor in the fact that the sneaker game is a culture game. Yeah. And, and they didn't factor in the fact that they would have to buy so many GRs just to get one pair of prestigious J's. To become mm-hmm. a tier zero or a consortium right. yep. account yeah. for and Adidas. You know, that, I watched that happen with Primitive. Yeah. Like, you have to buy all of these just so you can get this one yeah. mm-hmm. in order to, you know, yeah. to be a part of that. Yeah. So that's, that's the whole thing, too. Man, that, you spent a lot of knowledge just in that last topic alone. Man, that, was, that was good. I, I can't say that I expected anything less. Yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, we appreciate you being here. Once again, I'm glad that we were able to give you a proper kickback. You know, last time we were in transition, some things yeah. didn't really work out the way that we would have hoped. But you get to be our first real live guest. You get to Thank be in you, the new man. studio. 
This feels good. You get to yeah. let the fuck boys know what's really going on. <laughs> fuck boys. I'm surprised you didn't wear your anti fuck boy. Uh, shout out to sh- anti fuck boy sneaker, sneaker club. club. Yeah, shout out to those guys. I still don't have no t-shirt. Thanks no, I got that. you. I got you. <laughs> no, but but I, I want to do some. I want to do some dope things with them. I'm like, I like, I like their mission. I like their vision. I like. I I just you know, it's one of those things that like, they're doing their thing. Hell yeah. Um, are we not talking about uncomfortable shoes? Or are we done? Do we have? Are we? Where I are mean, we're. How much are we looking? Are we done? Five minutes. We got. We, we can got, talk about it. On we got four minutes. Four minutes. Four minutes. Three oh, minutes. No, then we're good. Because no, it's no, going no, down we, really quick. I don't know if there's three. I know minutes. it went five to yeah. four yeah. to three. <laughs> no, I mean, it's you know. If we have a few minutes. This it's... is fa- the fashion versus comfort. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's like, and love to like Geiger. You know, but like it's like I keep it real and I keep it that. These are some of the best made shoes mm. aesthetically and style wise and whatever and I've got three pairs. Mm-hmm. They are some of the most uncomfortable shoes because these are like I'll, I'll let it pass around. There's just no No, I have a pair. You you know mm-hmm. what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's I'll like hold it. I made the mistake <laughs> I made the mistake of wearing them on set one day for thirteen oh, hours. Oh yeah. No yeah. way. And the thing is is like I'll always buy John stuff because he makes dope ass shoes. I still love mm-hmm. them. Yeah, they're they're yeah. amazing but it's like it made me realize that I have to get in souls to help. Uh you know. Dan, uh, what, what are the other two pairs you have? They're the same. It's the black and white and the gray. So you have the... Same silhouette. I know it's the same silhouette. Yeah. It's the, silhouette. It's the but one... But you have the black with the white? White, yeah. The yeah. original, the first yes. pair? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Because yeah. I was going to say, this outsole feels a little bit different than the one that you have. Than mine? Is it not? Or am I crazy? It's a little stiffer. It does feel a little stiffer. Yeah, it's a little yeah, stiffer. Absolutely. But, that, but this is one of those things. This is like... Like when ladies will wear some dope ass heels for the fashion. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna rock them. And then they gotta These take them off when they walk into the car. I wear them with suits. I wear them for fashion and for yeah. style because yeah. they're 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 neck turners. Right. I, but I'm but not it's not gonna, meant to be on your feet for 13 hours. Thing. Right. Now, I had the privilege of sitting with John and talking specifically about that outsole and the creation of it and what went into it and how difficult it was for him to start that business in creating something from scratch. Because what most everybody does, and even Android Ohm up until now, and uh, Mark D'Angelo and these guys, I mean, a lot of them are pulling from the same factories in yeah. Italy, if you're going Italian aid, and they're getting the same outsoles. Mm. And John wanted to do something different and create his own thing. Obviously there's some inspiration there from threes. The and, three, yeah. Right, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he wanted to create his own thing, and it cost him a shit ton of money to get right. there. Um, I wouldn't count him out, and I think that he'll probably. Oh, I'm as buying, the company grows, and that's just the zero I'm, buying, ones. I'm buying the this yellow ones. Like I support him. But right I think as, as it grows and he's able to kind of you know modify and yeah. continue and, and and really move forward as mm-hmm. far as production yeah. goes. Yeah, then we'll see I mean, that same, like the Cortez, the same thing. You they had to get better too. over time. Right. You know, that's just yeah. the way it goes. Right. Right. Hell yeah, Nelson. Well, let them know where they can find you online. What you've got, your store on Melrose, Melrose, all that. Yeah, WCSP brand. That's our our Instagram. We're on Melrose seven six six seven Melrose. Come check us out. Um, uh, my Instagram is Nelson BTBMGR, um, and uh, check out Bait Me, Bait Me, B A I T Me. That's the Bait Me fam. Shout out. Um, and yeah. That's it. Like, hell yeah. Just keeping it going. Uh, thank you all so much. You know, thank you, Adam, Absolutely. Don, Jack, everybody. Like, I love this. This is awesome. And thank um, you for being like the big homie to the sneaker culture, too, man. Like, it, it really it, it's important to have, like I said, both sides of the spectrum, you know, the history and also the gatekeepers, the ones that are going to be like laying the smack down and letting the ones know that need to be told that they're fucking up, that they're fucking up. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so yeah. we appreciate you for My, doing that. I got Wolf. Like that's that's shoe wolf is my spirit animal, cause he just like <laughs> like he's another one of those cats like you know, just keeping it real and the way he's raising his son, mm-hmm. you know it's just like man that's like, we just we need to vocalize more we need to like, you know just be like that and and yeah. and again sometimes it's not liked sometimes it's it's people will be oh he's just bitter no I'm just being honest you know yeah. so. Uh, much love to you three for like always keeping it real. Uh, I enjoy watching the podcast, and and I'm glad that I can maybe watch this over again and see how dumb I sounded. <laughs> Thanks, so, man. You sound great, nah, man. you sound yeah. great, man. Well, this has been episode 25 of the Kickback. We will be back here next week, Facebook Live. 
Hang Time, Dash Radio, YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. You know we fucking with all of them right now. For Dano, <laughs> John Colombo, Nelson Diaz, I'm your boy Steezus. We will see you next week. I'll peace out. out. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah.